Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information and today we're going to reset the gearbox adaptations. Now you might be wondering why would you want to do that? Well especially as the gearbox starts to age and the seal which goes between the mechatronics unit and the body of the gearbox starts to leak pressure then you'll start getting really harsh gear changes yeah, and of course, really harsh gear changes put a lot of stress onto all the clutch packs and the shafts and the gearing and all sorts of things. And when you start having really hard shifts between fourth and fifth, fifth and sixth and the way back again, then the amount of torque put through the clutch packs can really destroy them. But now the fix for this I've covered in a video I did a couple of weeks ago. And the proper fix for it is to drop the pan so get rid of the fluid change the filter drop the mechatronics unit and fit a new seal between the mechatronics unit and the body of the gearbox that then allows the full pressure to build up in the clutch packs which is lost when uh, the seal starts leaking now at first it will only start leaking a bit and you'll start getting harsh gear changes and it's that point if you haven't got the time to take the car to the garage or get it up on a ramp uh, sorry not on a ramp on a lift and change these things then it's imperative that you stop getting hard shifts either don't drive the car or do this um, trick i'm going to show you now which is to reset the adaptations now what it does is it resets all the things that the gearbox has learned about changing gear and it has to learn them again and it notices straight away that you're getting harsh gear changes and it will change the behavior of the solenoids so that those harsh gear changes don't occur. Now I came across this as I think I mentioned in the last video a couple of weeks ago that my friend he got a 650 exactly the same time as I did and he did all the things that I should have done to my car to reduce the harsh gear changes which was obviously to change the fluid and the filter and so on. And he changed the fluid and the filter. It made a slight difference to the performance, but not a great deal. He was still getting pretty harsh gear changes and he gave me a drive in his car and those gear changes weren't right. Now, obviously the, what we know now, five or six years later, is that of course we need to change the mechatronics seal. But in those days we didn't know any better and it wasn't common knowledge. And so what he tried doing was uh, resetting the adaptations of the gearbox and that made a huge difference. It made it really smooth again. Now at that time I was starting to get harsh gear changes on this car and so I did exactly the same thing. I copied him completely and I just reset the adaptations and the gear changes were lovely and smooth. And I think I went on for about six months, nine months or so like that without any harsh gear changes at all. And it was time for the car to have the gearbox fluid and filter changed anyway. And when I took it there uh, to my friend Lee Shannon, who does all my BMWs, he said, yeah, it's a living God, good job you brought it here because you start getting those harsh gear changes, he said, and uh, damage can occur to the gearbox. And the actual root cause of it is the mechatronic seal. And so he dropped the mechatronics unit, changed all the seals, put it up together. I haven't had any problems ever since, and that's four or five years ago now. Been quite a few years since I bought this car. So there we go. So what we'll do is I'll get the laptop out again, just like I did a couple of weeks ago, plug it into the system. Now, I think you can probably do this with Carly, but as I said, I find Carly a bit amateur hour, to be honest, and trying to work out what's going on a tiny little smartphone screen or a tablet is uh, beyond the capabilities of my 60 year old eyes I'm afraid so yep I like a big laptop and I like Inpa it's been very reliable and I've used it for all sorts of things on this car and that car and the Mini and all the BMWs I've had I've always used Inpa on them and nothing else as I said I tried Carly on the 6 series and it really just I just couldn't display exactly the right information that I needed to whereas I can with Inpa so no problem at all. So that's why I'll be using input. It's a bit more of a faff because of course you've got to have a laptop and you've got to have the, the lead and all the rest of it. And I've these days got to plug the laptop in because 
battery lasts about three seconds. So yeah, that's what we go through. And we go through how to get to that stage where we can reset the gearbox adaptations. And I'll show you which, exactly which keys to press and so on. And what I do is I record the screen as we do it so I can show you in real time what I'm doing. Right, let's get on with it. Right, first thing we need to do is connect the USB cable. And here we go. This little catch on just underneath there. Not sure where it is on left-hand drive cars. And up we go. And the red light should come on. There we go. That's in. And then... Right, I've got the cable plugged in. My computer's ready to go. Oh, as ready as it's <laughs> ready to go as it ever is. <laughs> Being 10 years old. So we're going to use BM Cables Diagnostics. And I had a look last night to see if, see if BM Cables are still going. And I'm afraid, no, they seem to have disappeared. Now, with the cable connected, you first of all get a, a message come up and say, connect the cable. Well, we've connected it already, so we don't need to worry about that. And then the message disappears. INPA. F5 for the E60, 61, 63, 64. So F5 for us. We'll have a look at the transmission. Gearbox control module. Get a couple of errors as usual. F4 to check the error memory as usual. F1. No, nothing there. F10 back. If we want to go straight on to uh, clear the adaptations, it's F6 and then F3. F3 here, that will clear the adaptations. I don't need to do it on this gearbox, it's in excellent condition, very smooth shifts. If you've got harsh gear changes, that's where to go. Okay, so as simple as that, and then F10 to go back to the start. And we'll have a quick look through the gearbox, and I think what I'll do is I'll start the engine, or move the camera actually, start the engine, and we can see what these do. Right, let's uh, let's get the car running. And then we can have a look at some of the things you can read in IMPA. So let's go back to transmission. This transmission, GS19, couple of error messages. Let's have a look at read status, what we can find. Okay, F2. This is the position of the shifter. Right, let's get the camera up there a bit better. I'm going to move the shifter out of park. We're in reverse. We're in neutral. We're in drive. So you can see the positions of those selections there change as I move the gear stick. So if you've got problems where it won't go into gear, that's the first place to start. Okay, so that was F2. F3, that's what the solenoid valves are doing in the gearbox, so I'm putting it into reverse, into drive, there we go, and into neutral, and so on. So you can see the, the solenoid valve ch F3 changing status. Okay, F4, that's the wheel speed, we're not moving anywhere, so we're not going to get anything there. This is the Tiptronic stuff, so if I put the gear into drive and then push the gear selector to the left, there we go, M slot pin's gone off, I put it back in, there we go, that's into normal drive, that's into sport, Tiptronic forwards and backwards, here we go, there we go, that's all it does, on and off and on, that's negative, that's positive, so that can check, if you've got problems with your Tiptronic or Steptronic not going into gear properly or not changing to the right modes then those are the things to check so forward forward backwards backwards back into drive back into neutral so there we go that's uh, some things to check that's f6 f7 that uh, gives us um, the indication of what's the inputs and outputs of the gearbox so i'll just Put the handbrake on just in case and there's the first one accelerator pedal angle i'll give it a poke there we go very nice and of course the engine speed will increase with the throttle turbine speed now of course with the car in 
uh, park or in neutral, the turbine speed will follow the engine speed. Okay, there we go. That's exactly what should happen. So I'll turn the park distance control off. Now put it into gear and of course the turbine speed will go to zero. Here we go. There we go, that's exactly what we'd expect. The gearbox internals aren't moving. The impeller's turning because it's uh, connected to the engine, of course, and uh, but the turbine speed's dropped to zero because well, the car itself isn't moving. I'll put it back into park again. Here we go. And you'll see the turbine speed start to increase. And it should end up not far off of what the engine speed is. Of course, we're getting a slight bit of um, slip between the two. Um, the engine's not turning that fast and it's not working that efficiently. Get up the speed a bit faster and they'll start following each other a bit closer. There we go. So that's a good indication that the input to the gearbox is working. So we've got the engine, which is the impeller speed, turbine speed, which is the input to the gearbox. Um, got the gearbox temperature, which is obviously increasing, and the engine temperature, which is increasing. Output speed, uh, speed is zero because, of course, we're not moving. Now, you may well see errors on gearboxes which have been damaged. You quite often get an error code that says, uh, complains about the output speed and people try changing the output speed sensor but it all it means is that it the turbine speed was up when it was in gear it, it expects the output speed to go up with it because the car should be moving but if you've got an internal gearbox fault of course the turbine will go up when it's in gear and the output speed won't because you're not getting any drive through the gearbox so these are the places to check it Okay, and this is also a good place to check your gearbox temperature, make sure it isn't going too high. The gearbox fluid is heated up by the coolant in the N62. There's a heat exchanger which takes the coolant, heats up the ATF, returns it to the gearbox, and you'd have problems with that heat exchanger where, especially the thermostat in it, and then the gearbox temperature will go too high. And when that happens, it will lock you into first, second and third gears and it won't allow four, fifth and sixth. So that's something well worth remembering. Right, there we go then. That's a very quick run through looking at the gearbox and how to reset adaptations. Fantastic trick to get your gear changes back to being smooth again. And of course it saves damage to the engine. And it gives you fair warning once you've done it that you need to get that uh, me mechatronic seal changed especially if the harsh gear change is coming back again that's the your last warning to get that seal changed before damage can happen to the gearbox but resetting the adaptations reduces the strain on the gearbox in the intervening period be between you getting harsh gear changes and changing the mechatronic seals so that no damage occurs to the gearbox because without the harsh gear changes there's no damage being done it's only when you start getting harsh gear changes that you've got to you really need to sort it out straight away now of course the gearbox will get to a point with leaking from the mechatronic seal that no matter what you do to adaptations it won't get rid of the harsh gear changes you've got to do it you've got to change the seal anyway thanks very much for watching it's miles too cold out here to stay any longer and i'll see you next time